Hey everybody, it's Mike from Orderflows here and welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you could join me for today's video. We're going to be talking about stopping volume in the order flow. You know, recently I did a couple videos on um, market exhaustion, price exhaustion using the actual order flow volumes and as well as using the order flows ratios. And today's video is sort of, you know, on the opposite side of the spectrum where you're looking at the decent, uh, you know, the heavy volumes there to stop the stop a move that's happening. Now, before I jump in, remember, if you enjoy my videos and find you're learning something, getting something out of them, be sure to uh, subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell so you don't miss any new uploads. And if you find today's video useful, be sure to hit the like button for me and leave a comment sharing you know, your biggest takeaway. I love hearing your feedback. Um, you know, if, if there's something you want to see me talk about in an upcoming video, be sure to uh, leave a comment there. So your support really does go a long way um, in helping me come up with uh, ideas and uh your questions are much appreciated. So let's uh, jump into today's topic. All right, let's get into it. So again, you know, recently I did a couple of videos on price exhaustion. All right, so, and I, I just talked about the order flow ratios. Now there's two types of ratios. There's a ratio balance high, ratio balance low. The ratio balance high indicates um, price exhaustion, market exhaustion taking place. And the opposite is a ratio balance low, which indicates stopping volume. Now, do you need to use ratios to determine that? Well, no. I mean, if you're looking at the actual volume itself, you can sort of determine that. However, if you're looking at different markets, obviously different markets have different volume amounts that they trade. So what you might consider stopping volume in one market may not be considered stopping volume in a different market. Okay. So the easiest way to identify it that I found was by using ratios, by um, looking at the actual volumes and using a ratio of the volume at different levels to give me a blue number below the bar if it's a green up candle or above the bar if it's a red down candle. Okay. Now, there's just sort of go back to the types of ratios that exist, right? There's two types. There's ratio balance highs, ratio balance lows, right? Price exhaustion is a ratio balance high, which is 30 and above. Now, a ratio balance low, which is price defense, um, is a number between basically, you know, one and zero. I, I like to use around um, 0.75 and zero, it's never going to be negative. Okay, so it's, it's it's kind of a tight threshold, right? You're talking less than one and zero. Okay, and again, the lowest it could go is zero. It's not never going to be negative. And you know, it's funny because I, I have the default set on my orderflows trader as zero point six nine. You can see I got it set at uh, 0.71, but really, you know, you could get away with uh, 0.75. That's that's a threshold that I like. You know, the reason I have it at 0.69 is because I realized as people started copying my um, concepts, right, my order flows ratios was one of the ways that I was trading for a long time. I, I still look at it, obviously, because it's built into my softwares. They were literally copying the 0 0.69. Now, remember, these ratios, these thresholds are not set in stone. You could use whatever you want. Again, like I said, I know some people use one. So it's between one and zero. Um, I like to use 0 0.75, but I set it at 0 0.69 because I wanted to see, you know, is people really literally copying me the exact same settings and putting it on their own software, which they were. So, but, you know, I'm not dumb. I got eyes and I could just see at the chart. So if it's um, a, a number like 0 0.7, which I think there was in the euro currency the other day, you know, all those guys that are just blindly copying the other software that's it's got it set at 0.69 are, are missing them. Really, it's a flexible number, ideally less than one, but somewhere around 0.75 and one, or sorry, and zero. So 0.75 and zero. Um, anyway, I'll just keep it there for now. I said this one originally I had a 0.71, but you can see here, okay, so 0 0.39, 0 0.13, right? These are bullish. Um, ratio bounds lows, which indicates stopping volume at the bottom of this bar, the bottom of this bar, right? Here's a 0 0.62 at the top of this bar. Now here's a 0 0.5 at the top of this bar. Here's a 0 0.19, right? If it's red, it's the top of red candles. If it's blue, it's below up candles. 
So remember, when you're talking about stopping volume, if the market's not moving and you get a, a racial balance low, well, it's probably not going to be very effective because there's no move to stop, right? You want the, a move, right, down into a new low or into a new swing high. That's where you want to see the stopping volume. Here, 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 ideally. This one just sort of went sideways before going back up to new highs. But the whole concept of stopping volume, price defense, is level being defended a move that has to be stopped no matter what right well, i'll say no matter what but you get the idea right so let me just uh show you a better example here i think there was one in the euro currency the other day six uh here six e sort of go back uh i forgot what day it was i think it was probably thursday um yeah like right here okay here's your pullback right so you know Here's an area where we're going sideways, okay? And you get bullish racial bounds low, bullish racial bounds low. But there's no move to, to stop. The market's just going sideways. That This one is a move that you're looking to stop, right? So if, if it's in a sideways market, right, that's not where you want to use it. I mean, what's, you know, by definition, it's stopping volume. But there's no move here. It's going sideways. That's why I say look for it on a pullback. Look for it on a swing high or a swing low. You know, bonds, okay? Market went up, tested the high, pulled back. Here's a nice racial bounds low indicating stopping volume, 1261. You can see the heavy volume down here. Then it went up here to these new highs. You know, you can see the volume up here, 1175. Uh, you know, the market started to sell off, then it ran into... You know, price exhaustion here with the bullish ratio, and okay, it did go back up. But this is what I'm talking about here, right? You, you see a 0 0.06. Okay, but the market's just going sideways here. Now, again, you know, you can see obviously there's probably some liquidity right here because you sort of got this one, two, you know, triple top. But more or less, you know, the, the swing high is just right here. It's just going sideways. You do get a small move down. Okay, you get a bullish ratio here, right, 0.35. But again, it's going sideways. At least here, it came up to a new high. Well, it's an equal high from earlier. But, you, you know, double top, pulls back. Then you get that bullish ratio. If this 0.35 was in this bar here, yeah, I would like it, you know, a lot more. Okay, but it, that's not where it's coming in. It's coming in, you know, in back in the middle of your sideways activity. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, another market, right? We'll look at a commodity market because, you know, commodities and stock indices, in my opinion, trade a bit different in the sense of, you know, there's different market participants, right? Stock indice is cash settled. A commodity like, you know, any of the grains is physically settled, right? People that so you have a different component of traders, right? Different trader set. Because majority of the people that are trading soybeans, wheat, um, corn, meal, they they have to, you know. I mean, that's literally their job. They're not. There is a speculative component, but the speculative component in commodities is a lot less than in the stock indices, in, in my opinion. Um, so let's just. Uh, Take a look at uh, soybeans, okay, just really quick here. So, again, this is, uh, you know, Friday. Let's sort of go back, okay. So, now, now the thing to remember with beans, okay, with grains, rather, is they trade overnight until, you know, what is that, 740. Then they reopen at 830. So, a lot of the stuff, you know, the volume is a lot lighter at in the overnight session. Um, you know, it's more prudent if you're going to trade commodities like the grains trade them during the day session um now that's not to say that you, know, you can't trade them at night i mean here's ratio bounds low here there's a ratio bounds low right from the high to the low of the day um you got a bearish one up here okay another bearish one you get smaller pullbacks and that's just the difference you just don't have that volatility necessarily at night that you have during the day but i, I just find it a bit easier to trade them 
during the day, um, during the day session. So take a look here. This was on Thursday. Low of the day, stopping volume. Rallies up to where? Price exhaustion up here. But then it sells off to new lows. You know, this, I would have liked this one better had it touched the low. But again, it, it you know, hit a low, rallied up. I'd hate to, I don't like to call this a pullback because it's just, you know, it's a range bar. Um, you know, but uh, again, that's sort of the, the thing that you could take into account if you want to trade it. Now, this was interesting here. This was also on Thursday a little bit earlier, right? Low of the day, stopping volume, started to go up, pulled back one tick lower, and then popped up, right? Now, on this one, right, remember what I was telling you earlier about the, the ratios, right? 0.69, where is it here, right? So the default is set at 0.69, which, again, these are not lines drawn in the sand, right? So... Really, what I'm looking for is a number, you know, 0.69 or below, but 7, 0.75 is really about what I'm looking for, right? So if I see 0.7, I would still take it. If I had it set at 0.75, you know, it would still be valid, right? It would still be that blue ratio. Again, it's just one of those things I, I, I threw in there just to see how people were copying it. But by looking at it, I could see 0.7 is obviously right next to, you know, it's 1% difference between 0 0.69 and 0 0.7. But again, you, know, you got the 0 0.5 here, but then you can just see the volumes here, right? The 108 appearing there at the low. Now, what is unique about these ratios, right? And the stopping volume is a lot of times you, you would think that that's where the point of control is going to come in. But often it doesn't, because really what you're taking a look at is how the volume is trading, you know, towards the bottom of the bar. Okay, point of control doesn't necessarily have to be down there, right? And sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, right? When it is, it makes it, you know, very visual, very easy to see for a lot of people. But don't think it has to appear down there. So I'm going to wrap up that video on stopping volume. So I hope you can see it a little bit better again that's one of the benefits of using software that can analyze it for you and highlight it for you right because at the end of the day you know you should be able to do calculate it just by looking at it and seeing oh you know i got 153 down here that's pretty decent volume for this bar i got 108 down here that's pretty decent volume stopping this move so i, I know there's some passive buyers coming in down here what should you expect if you see passive buyers coming in at the low of the day. Well, expect a rally. That's what you should look for, right? And again, it's not about trying to predict the low. It's just reacting to what you're seeing in the order flow come in, right? I mean, the volume, the numbers are there. It's up to you to react to it. So, again, if you enjoyed my videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment in the comments below on what you'd like to see me talk about next. So I'll catch you guys all on the next video. Bye-bye.